Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And today, as part of the anatomy series, we're going to talk about bites. So bites, teeth, showing the teeth, what the bites are, what the teeth mean, uh, how many teeth they should or could have. And, you know, we're going to show you today, obviously on a poodle, but then we're going to just like clarify a few other bite terminologies that you may have heard or you may own in your own home. So let's get to it. Uh, poodles have or should have a scissors bite. So first of all, what does a scissors bite look like? A scissors bite looks like when the inside incisors, we'll get to that, fit neatly inside the upper incisors, like a pair of scissors going together. And so this is a very common, very typical, probably the most known bite is a scissors bite. So let's get down to what do the teeth mean? So first of all, dogs typically have or should have 42 teeth and they have 22 on the bottom and 20 on the top. The difference in that being in the premolars. So um, we all know about the canines, the largest teeth, the fangs, should you say. So these are the canine teeth, right? And you, know, you see how they, neat, they neatly lock together. Then these little teeth in the front that make up a big portion of the bite, what we like to see, there should be six on the top and six on the bottom. So these are the incisors, top and bottom, canines, top and bottom. So then on the bottom, the first four teeth, so one, two, three, four are her premolars. And then there, she has one, two, three molars in the back. Now, often those back molars like are quite small. So sometimes you think it's one giant tooth, but really it's two smaller teeth. And then on the top, we have three premolars and then three molars. So three molars, three premolars, canines, incisors, 20 on the top, 22 on the bottom, scissors bite, all very, very common things. Um, another piece of bite terminology that you might have heard about, so is inclusion. So if you, if you think of this as like a V and inverted V, the teeth should fit nicely together, meshing together like a zipper with the teeth interlocking, right? So that's what we mean by inclusion. You know, I would say that this poodle here has quite nice inclusion because this tooth goes in the V between these two teeth. Um, you may have heard something about a wry mouth, right? So a wry mouth is when the bite is actually crooked, right? So the teeth would be actually crooked. We can't show that on her because we can't rearrange her teeth to be crooked. So think of the teeth as being a wry, so a wry mouth. Again, she has a scissors bite. Um, overshot would mean that there would be a gap between her top teeth and the bottom teeth. So the front teeth have overshot. Um, and it's not very common that we desire this bite. However, the reverse of that undershot, when the lower jaw, the teeth are not, are, would be up and over the upper teeth and sometimes there'd be a space. That's actually a quite common bite that is correct in many breeds. If you think of a Shih Tzu, you think of a Bulldog, French Bulldog, any of those bully breeds typically have that undershot bite sometimes called a reverse scissor bite, right? Because they want them very, very close. And those are like the most typical bites that you are going to see and kind of the basic things that you need to know about teeth, about bite, about inclusion, and some of the things that may or may not go wrong with your dog. Obviously dogs can also have missing teeth right? They can have missing incisors, missing molars, missing premolars. Um, there are breeds out there that it is a disqualification if they have um, up to a certain amount of missing teeth. So that's why it's very important to understand how many teeth your dog has. When is it a fault? When is it a disqualification? How is that going to affect your breeding? How you show, how you show the bite even to a judge? All of these things should be taken into consideration. So when we are talking about bite types, today we showed you what a proper bite looked like on a poodle. So a poodle has a scissors bite. So if we think of the top incisors sitting just over top of the bottom incisors, this would be a scissors bite. This is the most common type of bite. It's, it's desired in most breeds. There's also reverse scissors. So reverse scissor is when 
the bottom teeth sit just outside the the bottom incisors sit just outside the top incisors. Then we also have a level bite. So a level bite would be when the incisors sit on top of one another and when looked at from the front, that bite looks level. There isn't the bottom incisors sliding on the outside of the top or the top sliding on the outside of the bottom. This is a level bite. So Afghan hounds in some of their standards around the world, um, a level bite is acceptable. And in some standards, the level bite is actually preferred in Afghan hounds. So there are breeds out there that you would want a level bite. As well, there is an overshot bite where the, the top incisors are well overshooting the bottom incisors. And there aren't many breeds out there that we desire that overshot mouth. Typically that is thought of as a fault, actually in poodles, that type of bite, an overshot bite is in fact a disqualification. And then we move on to another untypical bite for most breeds, but a bite that is desired in many breeds and that is the undershot mouth where the jaw undershoots the top jaw, the bottom incisors are sitting outside with kind of a space between them and the top incisors. And we see this many, many times in our bully breeds. So bulldogs, French bulldogs, bull mastiffs, um, even Shih Tzus. There's lots of breeds that have this undershot mouth that is desired. And typically when we look at those bites, you can actually see that those dogs possess their those bites um, without even opening their mouths, right? Like when you look at a boxer, it looks like it is undershot that the bottom jaw is bigger and stronger and comes out beyond that jaw. So these are some bites that are really, really important to know. It's a really good idea for you to be really acquainted with the proper bite and proper dentition for your breed. Remembering that dentition is everything we talk about within the bite, right? The size, the shape of the teeth. Like you're sometimes surprised at some larger breeds that have quite small teeth, some smaller breeds that have quite large teeth. So we look at color, we look at the size of the teeth, we look at the placement, we look at the spacing of the teeth. All of these things make up your dog's dentition. So one of the things that I like to say is, you know, take care of your dog's teeth. Make sure that you are brushing them, you are scaling them often, especially the smaller the breed and the smaller the teeth, the more you have to be diligent about proper canine dental care. Um, we have lots of webinars and information about that in Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. I invite you to check that out. When thinking about what type of bite your dog has, it's usually related to the origin and purpose of that breed. So a lot of our bully breeds were meant to fight bulls or be some kind of guard dog and they needed that strong underjaw that strong underjaw with teeth so they could bite and hook and hold on to that bull, to um, whatever they were protecting people from. They you really needed that bite to be able to grab a hold of and do its job of sticking in there. So that is why it is really, really important to understand the origin of your dog. When we look at a poodle's bite, we want to make sure that they have that nice strong underjaw because they are supposed to carry a duck, which is quite a large animal, like through the swamp. So it's important that they had the proper bite. And that comes to my next thing, which is size of teeth. Sometimes if you maybe look into the mouth of a Yorkshire Terrier, you might be surprised at how large its teeth are compared to many other toys. But that's because they were originally a terrier. In some parts of the world, they're actually in the terrier group. So it makes sense to me that they would have bigger teeth than dogs that were bred precisely just to be your companion and sit around and basically eat off your plate, right? Like think about those things in terms. We talk about some breeds that have like a soft mouth. A soft mouth doesn't mean they have soft teeth, but we want when they take a hold of your hand um, to feel soft in there. Maybe those breeds might have slightly smaller teeth. They, we want them to have a soft mouth. So when they're retrieving smaller fowl to us, they're not damaging the body of that fowl, right? So these are all things to think about when you're thinking about bite. And another thing we did talk, talk about inclusion a little bit earlier, but one of the things that I would like to say about inclusion is that 
Some people really consider it to be a marker of how good your dog's bite really is. And I've even been told, and I, you know, basically have found this to be true, that if people have done some dentistry in order to make their dog's bite look like a scissors bite or a correct bite in the front, often the inclusion will be off. So if your dog doesn't have a scissors bite um, and also the inclusion seems to be way off, sometimes that's a marker to me that this bite won't get better with age, right? Because dogs do go through weird teething periods where some of their teeth fall out, their top jaw is growing faster than their bottom jaw. There's a lot of people out there that really believe the bottom jaw, jaw grows last. Therefore, if you have a puppy that's just finishing teething and it looks a little bit overshot, not really worry about that because they think the bottom jaw will catch up to that, right? But inclusion is one of those things that you can look at to see if that's true. So the next time you're checking out your dog's dentist, I hope that this helped. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications, that way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.